Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for May 10th, 2021. Glad that you are with me. Let's go ahead and get started. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all glory, we give you thanks that through the gift of baptism we have been crucified with Christ and united with him in resurrection. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let our lives proclaim the good news that we are dead to sin and alive to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our reading for today is... There we go. Revelation chapter 12. The woman and the dragon. A great, listen for God's word to speak to you. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs. In the agony of giving birth, then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads, His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan. The deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down. Who accuses them day and night before our God? But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and to the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. So when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman who had given the two wings of the great eagle so that she could fly from the serpent into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Then from his mouth the serpent poured water like a river after the woman to sweep her away with the flood. But the earth came to help To the help of the woman, it opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from its mouth. Then the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her children, those who keep the commandments of God and hold the testimony of Jesus. And then we really get into chapter 12 then. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Getting back into Revelation, so um, this is sort of an interlude chapter, uh, many say. It is this, it comes between these sort of two telling of the, the overall arc of Revelation. So we have sort of these terrible things that happen, um, God's timing and God's will being greater than anything that we understand, and then the, uh, the seeding of God upon the throne and his lamb, right? So now we have this very, very sort of allegorical um, tale of existence, right? So we have this woman who appears as this portent, this sort of 
in the stars and there's a dragon and i apologize for the way i say dragon sometimes i say it in a weird i don't know where i get that from but anyways um big lizard scary thing um this dragon this red dragon chases her and wants to eat her child that it's she's about to give birth to um this has definite ties to sort of greek mythology especially where there are many times where that's the case where there's sort of the the angry god who is just about to consume the the child coming out um but here we have this child being born of this woman um it could be all sorts of different things um i think it is israel herself um th this image of this this beautiful woman she bears this child that is the messiah the promised son um it could also be mary of course or it could be some something that we don't even understand um the the child is snatched up and brought into heaven ready to rule the throne and the dragon and all of the angels that follow him are sent down to earth and its timing is really strange here and i think probably probably part of it is that it doesn't actually coincide with our understanding of time as it exists right we understand time in a linear fashion in only a certain way and that's not always the way that the things of god work um but the dragon that is satan and uh the devil those those words satan means accuser devil i don't remember what devil actually means but um i think it's enemy um they are sent down to earth and it's sort of this, well, now we're, we've taken care of them in heaven, but woe to the earth because now the devil is here and is sort of mixing things up. And so the devil continues to chase uh, the woman and chases her into the wilderness where she's cared for. Um, again, back to this sort of idea that this allegory is of Israel. Um, there's her time of pain and, and she brings forth this child. And then soon after that, she is sent off into the wilderness, very similar to the diaspora of 70 AD, where Israel is sent um, all over the Hebrew people, the Jewish people are sent all over the world and don't come back together until 1946, where um, the nation of Israel is is established by the UN, right? Um, so, or the, yeah, whatever it was called at the time. Um, so that's that's kind of the idea. Arguably, that's what's going on. We're talking about big, big, huge cosmic things. And now we're going to see how this all plays out with these various beasts. And we'll talk about that. So we'll continue on with that later to, uh, later this week. But now let's go ahead and look at our devotion for today. Panel explores emotional toll of pandemic. Presbyterian Mental Health Network hosts first major event. Mental Health, image by Natasha Spencer of Pixabay. Psychological weight of living through today's challenges from, wait, there seems to be something else. The psychological weight of living through today's challenges from COVID-19 to racial oppression has acknowledged, was acknowledged during a panel discussion hosted by the Presbyterian Mental Health Network. It's been sustained traumas for all of us now for months but also acute trauma for each of us at various times, said Dr. Valerie Lipscomb, a literature professor at the University of South Florida and clerk of session at Kirkwood Presbyterian Church in Baddington, Florida. However, not everyone responds to crisis in the same way, noted the Reverend Dr. Bridget Pigu, director of spiritual health at Emory University Hospital Midtown in Atlanta. For example, some people might view being quarantined as an annoyance, while others might find it deeply disturbing. Picu also noted that there are people who feel out, so out of sorts because they're used to having conversations with adults but are now spending time with children. There's a disorientation occurring in, our, in your body, and so based on past experiences, you may enter into grief. You may enter into depression, she said. The panel discussion, which featured three speakers from varied backgrounds and perspectives, was the first major event for the Presbyterian Mental Health Network, a resource that was called for as part of the Presbyterian Mental Health Initiative adopted by the 223rd General Assembly, 2018. We want to help 
to be to be able to connect churches in different parts of the country that are trying to do similar types of ministry so that we can learn from each other and grow from each other and innovate better and faster by learning from one another, said Reverend Dan Milford, who is the network's moderator and pastor of Covenant Presbyterian Church in San San Antonio, Texas. The discussion, which is posted online, was led by Tara Rolstad, a network member, public speaker, and founder of Shuddering Stigma with Stories. Lipscomb noted that some people are dealing with anger and fear related to feelings of loss of control. I really think it's important to just keep going back to the basics of our faith, she said. We're not in control. We're not supposed to be right. And to remind ourselves that it is God who is in control. But at the same time, it is okay to acknowledge and accept our fear and our anger and our normal human responses to that, but to just keep recentering ourselves in our faith. Reverend Dr. Jerry Cannon, head of staff at C.N. Jenkins Memorial Presbyterian Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, talked about the pandemic robbing people of the ministry of presence by limiting home and hospital visits and keeping ministers and others from gathering around families in normal ways, such as when someone dies. He also lamented that some people have had to say their final words of dying to dying loved ones by phone. Another burden for some is systemic racism. African Americans have had to deal with that stress pre-pandemic, and now you have a pandemic on top of that, he said. Those layers are piling one on top of another. Without the church being an open being open to affirm the affected individuals. Canon, a proponent of therapy, said pastors should not be reluctant to look beyond the church when a member is struggling. If it is outside of my boundaries, I will say not as a disclaimer, but really as an offer to them and to myself, you know, can we look for outside resources? He said. Pick you said that sometimes helping people to find the right language to describe what they're feeling can be comforting and grounding. She also said there's value in just letting people talk and, if necessary, helping them search online for a therapist. Finding some form of release through journaling meditation, or yoga also can be beneficial, Cannon said. A change of perspective also might be in order. I think it's important to confront and realize that we aren't going to go back to normal, Lipscomb said. For me, the grieving process and dealing with it as a grieving process is a positive way of looking at it. We are assured that the Holy Spirit will be with us as we grieve and will work, walk alongside us and comfort us. Written by Darla Carter, Communications Associate for the Presbyterian Mission Agency. Now let us join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ for all. The wonder and beauty of creation. The love of family and friends. Opportunities for faithful service. Particular blessings of this day. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We pray for the Presbyterian Mental Health Network. We also lift up So Young Kim of the Presbyterian Mission Agency and Sean Kang of the Presbyterian Mission Agency. God, your compassion for all your children is reflected in the lives of so many people in your church. We thank you for their quiet faithfulness as they minister, each in their own way, to those around them. 
Amen. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion, for you have come to us in Jesus Christ and shared our life so that we may share his resurrection. Especially we pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Peace and justice in the world. Those in whom we see Christ's suffering. Those who offer Christ's compassion. Particular concerns of this day. People of God, for what else do we pray? We lift up Ernie, a friend of Evelyn's who is diagnosed with leukemia. We thank God for the birth of Sullivan, a great grandson of the Garlands. We pray for Louisa, Linda's granddaughter. We pray for Barbara, who is now in Baton Rouge with her son, continuing to recover and um, after her fall. And all the other people and situations that we have on our hearts and our minds. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our hearts and minds the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Now the grace of God be with us all, now and always. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our prompt for counting the Omar today, week six, foundation or harmony. So um, how does everything kind of hold together? What is the foundation, the root of, of the world and uh, of ourselves? Today we talk about the expansiveness or generosity of that. How does my sense of having a firm foundation relate to the expansiveness or generosity in me? When today did I feel harmonious with the loving kindness in me? When today did I feel willing to try anything because I felt a firm foundation? Does my loving kindness or liberal spirit add to the harmony of my inner self? How can I express my true self? If I showed it, would my true self be in harmony with God's will for my life? Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Today's liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Our readings came from the 
New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our devotion came from the Mission Yearbook, as well as Counting the Omer by Teresa Horton. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a very blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.